Hey guys, thanks for coming in today. Remember, this is impact. And in impact, we look for guys that are impacting the world and not only the world, but impacting their world, people within their uh, sphere of influence as well. And so that's where it all starts. God allows you and I to impact those close to us and work our way out. And so Today, again, we have Pastor Brandon Holdhouse, uh, who, by the way, was a quite a baseball player at one time. And so I thought there was uh, this is a great opportunity to get him to come on today and talk about something that's very controversial, uh, at least in my world, because I am getting a lot of questions, a lot of people pointing fingers at me, a lot of things like that, people going, Jeff. This is okay. This is something that you were wrong in. All of this other stuff, you've made a big deal out of nothing. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this. Watch these three clips. Pastor Brandon, watch these for us, if you okay. will. And okay. we'll get into it. As soon as it's done, I'll make a couple more comments and ask you a few questions. And let's rock and roll, okay? So here we go. We'll play these right now. Oh, please, Lord, you know I want it. This People's Champ Award sincerely means so much to me. That means you guys out there are rooting for me and supporting me more than any other person out there that's doing what I'm doing. So thank you so much, guys. This is because of you. So this is a title back to you guys. Man, thank you so much for your support. And I could not do this without you guys. I love each and every one of you. And I pray every single day that we can become more of a Christ-centered community. And I think we're doing that, guys. So let's keep moving and leaning toward God because he's the answer. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. God bless, and hopefully we get that first place tonight. You guys supported me so much. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. This entire year, I've been focused on training, coming back. And I wanted to make history. I was on a mission to make history, to be the first two division Olympia champion ever. Number 18 Mr. Olympia of all time. And we did it, guys. We did it. And Derek, when you say we, everybody knows that even though bodybuilding is an individual sport, it's anything but. You've got a great team around you. I'm sure there's a few people you want to thank here tonight. Absolutely, I can't walk off the stage without thanking many people. So first and foremost, I want to thank my wife. I did it! Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm like shaking, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. It's okay. <laughs> normal, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Oh my god. This has and been you, such you know, an amazing year, oh my god. Thank you, God. Thank you. This is insane. And then we're having a baby in eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> She's the backbone to all of this and if it wasn't for her I couldn't be where I'm at today I promise you that so much that she does for me and uh, I'm just thankful that we you know have God in our lives and I you know my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he is that is the purpose for this calling he's given me 
and I pray every day that this becomes more and more a Christ-centered community in bodybuilding. And yeah, let's go, come on. And getting the People's Champ Award, guys, thank you so much for that. But I'm going to get accused of hating and things like that. And I want to stop right now and tell everybody that Derek and his wife seem like a sincere couple and seem like very nice people. From what I understand, Derek is a genuinely nice person. And I got an email today uh, from a guy who has been a Christian for a long time. And he had his Olympia watch party. And then he, of course, told me, he's like, man, it was so great, you know, that Derek gave all the glory to his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And and I have people that are saying, hey, Jeff, you know, Derek can do it. Derek won the Mr. Olympia. God must be for Derek winning the Mr. Olympia. Jesus helped him win the Mr. Olympia. And... So it, therefore, it must be okay. Um, and so having come out of that sport and been obsessed with it for so many years, I see some really inherent problems, not just with the sport, but with what is going on doctrinally, theologically in this whole thing. And so... Instead of me being the guy that's banging the drum, I wanted to get Pastor Brandon on because Pastor Brandon was in sports. He uh, very likely um, would have come out of college, possibly even played pro ball, uh, blew his uh, elbow out, I believe. Um, yeah. And so that shortened his career. God used that to take him somewhere else. And so... I want to stop right now and say this is not about Derek Lunsford. This is not about whether he's a nice guy or not. This is not even about whether Derek is sincere or not. This is about what is truth. You know, because here's the thing, and Brand Pastor Brandon, correct me if I'm wrong. This is going to go back to his worldview as well. Um, yeah. You know, do you have a biblical worldview? a true biblical worldview or not. And so tell us, number one, does God approve of this? Did God help him or make him win the Mr. Olympia? Is Was, was Jesus there that night making sure Derek won? You know, and does Jesus get glory when a pro bodybuilder who really should have said, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I should also thank the guy that I get my steroids from illegally and the custom agents who allow it to go through and the guy in China who makes the powders, who sends all of that stuff illegal. I mean, you see what I'm saying? This is There's yeah. a serious problem here. Pastor Brandon, take us through this really murky water because yeah. there are Christians that are really confused about this because Derek is such a nice guy sure so so l l let's separate the 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 um the intent and motivation and, and uh from him because he sounds sincere and he sounds like he's trying to do things for the Lord which is fine and and that's sincerity but sincerity doesn't make you right yes and that's the key is uh you know we have cults uh and those people that are involved in those cults are sincere about their faith but they're sincerely wrong and it's not to be judgmental or anything like that it's 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 the fact that we all are judged by the word of god and whether or not what our actions are doing uh meet those standards and what happens is when you you give glory to god for something that you've done illegally um, uh, or that has abused your body, and which is a violation of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, of, of damaging your body in order to achieve something, then you are now playing by the principle that the ends justify the means, yeah. and that is not sanctioned by God. That actually is a worldly trait, not a biblical trait, because in the, in the Bible, the, the ends are justified and the means are justified, which means we don't cheat, we don't take things that are unnatural to us. Uh, we don't damage our body to achieve things. And therefore, um, 
I, I get that he's sincere about giving thanks to God, and I'm sure he is. I'm not. That's not the question. Uh, if, right. if we're going to make that the question, then um, you, you know we're challenging the sincer- his, his sin- sincerity, and we're not. We're challenging the theology. Right. And apparently, he hasn't grown enough in his walk with the Lord to realize that what he is actually doing is contradicting himself. And so that's what a lot of carnal, worldly believers uh, think like. And where do I get the term carnal from? I get it from the Apostle Paul. And he 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 tells the Corinth church that, hey, you know, I wish I could speak to you as spiritual people. And he's referring to them as mature people, mature believers. He goes, but you're but but you're still carnal, you're babes in Christ. And this is first Corinthians chapter three. Mm-hmm. And he goes, instead, I have to feed you milk instead of feeding feeding you solid food. And so what you and I are talking about is solid food, but my impression of where he's at in his theology is he's still a babe in Christ. Now, I'm not challenging his faith, not at all. I'm just oh, saying yeah. I'm challenging his sanctification. He hasn't grown enough in his sanctification to realize that what you're doing is wrong um, from, from multiple uh, points of Scripture, particularly, number one, uh, the point of of abusing your body, okay? Yeah. So you're not supposed to do that at First Corinthians. That's what but my whole argument was when I was handing out people religious exemptions for not taking the experimental uh, poison into their right. bodies that Fauci wanted everyone to have. Yeah. And I was given the religious exemptions, and that exemption was based on I will not pollute my body with a foreign right. substance that is that will hurt me. Okay, same argument here. So in order to achieve something, I have to pollute my body. I have to do damage to my body. And as you and I have talked about, um, when you're doing uh, thousands of milligrams or whatever of testosterone, you're damaging your body. And and like uh, I think we talked in our previous discussion, many of the guys that you worked out with are dead now. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. You know, and and so it it does shorten your life. It has an effect. It hurts different uh, organs. Okay, so so let's go back to him. So what he doesn't understand was is what a lot of believers understand. Let me give you another scenario uh, so people can relate to this. So I'll come to there, there'll be a new Christian couple that comes to me and they're all pumped up, excited for Jesus. And they're just recently got saved and and uh, they're on fire for the Lord. And then uh, we'll, we'll, they, they come to the church and we look at the address that they, they sign a you know registration card for, and we look at the address and they have two last names, but they're living at the same address. Yeah. And then we, we talk to them and say, Hey, we noticed that you filled out a form. You're wanting to join the church and whatnot. It appears that you guys are living together. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we are. We're planning to get married. And we're like, well, do you know that that's called fornication in the Bible that you're not supposed to do that? Yeah. Oh, we didn't know. They're just totally ignorant of the whole fact. Right. And then we work on a plan of getting them separated before they get married and not having sex before they get married, because that's called fornication in the Bible. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't talk about that anymore. Oh, well, okay. I mean, <laughs> no, well, I, look, I, I'm I'm just saying I'm with you. I, I mean, I'm with you. So, but I, get I mean, I get it. you know, you know, you know, th- this video is is going to be incredibly unpopular because you just hit another sacred cow going on because we know you you see i mean goodness gracious the statistics of of kids that are now living together who don't even want to get married um you know so so i'm with you so go ahead but i'm just <laughs> look hey, I know everybody just- out there you know we're telling you what's biblical here okay right we're, so, we're, th- it's for your good it's not for it's not we're yeah. a killjoy yeah. So, yeah. So here's the thing. People think God and, and you know, uh, I can remember I did years and years ago. I used to think God was like this big hammer in the sky. And as soon as I did something wrong, you know, and but but I'm just saying, um, guys, hear what I'm about to say. What we are talking about, we are talking to you about in love. OK, as as Christians that. Um, have no angst towards you, towards Derek or anybody else. But truth is not subjective. Truth is truth. It's objective. You live your you you live up to the standard of truth. You don't pull the standard of truth down to you to fit your life. So 
Okay, my apologies, but I'm like, man, here we go. <laughs> so go ahead. That's good. So anyway, uh, you know, it's not a killjoy. And, and let me explain a little bit uh, as we're talking about that subject, because that's a third rail subject. Yeah. What what I have to see in counseling, and 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 I'll just tell everybody that that might be in a situation like that. What it's doing to you is you're destroying your ability to bond because once you are married and you get into that marriage, you will not be able to effectively bond to your 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 spouse. And this yeah. is the problem in counseling that I have to deal with on the back end. And I'll say, well, well, did you have multiple partners? You know, did you have premarital sex? And and inevitably say yes. And they can't figure out why now when when they're married, why they can't bond and why they are not romantically um, uh, engaged with one another. And it is because now um, their bonding and attachment has been destroyed yeah. because of the previous engagements. Because every time they have sex outside of marriage, a piece of them is left with that partner. And then they have a sex with another partner and a piece of them is left with another partner. And before you know it, there's nothing left inside of you anymore. You bonded to all these people and you've left yourself with those people. Yeah. And so they complain. I don't understand why my marriage is not working. It's because they don't have the ability to bond. So God's not trying to be a killjoy. He's trying to actually make your marriage better and trying to prevent you from getting into that kind of state. So anyway, that's another story. Okay. Yeah. Great the stuff. Point is, the point is, why don't they know that? Because number one, they go to churches, they never talk about it, number one. And so this, it's never addressed. And so they might be going to a church and th this church is like a, a motivational church. They're never going to talk about sin, you know, righteousness, righteous living. They're never going to touch right. on those subjects. So they think it's okay if the pastor never says anything about it. But the problem is the Bible, when you read it, is full of these admonitions not to do things like that. And 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 so so back to this point, it is incumbent upon the believer to grow and to learn these things and understand how does God want me to live? And so once you start growing and reading the word of God, because it's all in there, you start realizing, oh, he doesn't want me doing this. Oh, he wants me doing this. So there's a positive and negative going on in the way you're supposed to conduct your life. OK, so then so now we bring it to this guy. Right. It appears to me that he hasn't mm -hmm. read or he doesn't understand uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 as an example and doesn't understand that the ends do not justify the means in God's program. Right. And and that's actually a worldly mentality. Well, that, that again, goes back to a babe in Christ, a, a, a person that's on milk rather than on, on meat. And so here I am here and you and I are talking and what we're actually delivering to people right now is a steak. OK. Yeah. But if they're if they're a baby, a baby cannot chew a steak. It cannot digest the steak. The baby has to be given milk. And that's what I'm saying is like, because if you confront this this new carnal believer, worldly believer, uh, the way Paul terms them, and you and I are throwing steaks out to them, they're going to like, what? I can't digest what you're telling me. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem with new believers. Or let me add this. Believers who refuse to mature. Okay. Here's what I notice. There's a difference. A new believer doesn't know anything. I mean, they're just, they're raw. They come, they're green. They don't know anything. And then as they learn, they grow and then they change their lifestyle. An immature believer and a carnal believer refuses to grow. And that's what yeah. Paul was nailing in Corinth, that they have refused to grow and learn more about the way God wants them to live. And therefore they do not demonstrate godly or righteous living because they haven't matured. They actually demonstrate a worldly type of living. Mm -hmm. They live for the here and now. They live, you know, they live for building their empire. They they live for their agenda rather than God's. And yeah. and it sets the whole their whole life in motion. So mm. I'll, you know. So let me let me ask you this. Um, I've seen a couple of interviews where people interviewed him, evidently a pastor and looked like a youth pastor were interviewing him. And, you know, he was talking about, you know, everybody, you know, life is short, you know, you've got to find your purpose, you know, serve God, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And these guys didn't confront him with truth. Where yeah. are the, where's it, where are these pastors at? Where's, where's his pastor at? Where are the men that should be speaking into his life saying, Hey, Hey man, you know, now, now, 
this is going to run us into another problem because, um, and, and I'll get there in a second, but where are, where, where's his, where's his pastor, man? I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, well, let me explain something for everybody to understand the, the Bible predicts that the church would end in what's called the Laodicean era. Yeah. And, and what we mean by that is there was a church in Laodicea in Turkey that connotated the last day's church and Laodicea. Let me explain this for everybody means rule of the people. That's what Laodicea means in Greek rule of the people. And what the Bible was predicting is that in the last days in the church, the way the church would end is that the church would cater to the rule of the people rather than a, 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 an authority based rule as far as coming down from Jesus, the Bible, and then the pastor dispelling that information out. What's happening is there's a rule from the grassroots of people telling the pastor, this is what you we want you to say. We don't want you to tell us what we need to know. We want you to tell us what we want to hear. We want you to tickle our ear and tell us fables and stories that make us feel good about ourselves. This was predicted. So when you say, where are these pastors? They're Laodicean pastors. They yeah. are giving the people not what they need, but what the people want. And really what it's hap what's happened on Sunday morning is it's a motivational speak. You're good. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. Let's try to be the best guy we can for right now. And it's like, that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying you better get on God's agenda and get off your own because you'll end in a ditch if you, you stay on your agenda. Your ad agenda is not going anywhere. It has no eternal value, and you're going to end up dead if you don't stop. And so yeah. by, the Bible is trying to say get on God's agenda to have life and to, 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 to truly find what you're called to do, to find true meaning in life is only found on God's agenda because he's the one who created you. Okay, so this is going to this is going to get sticky because in that video clip that we looked at, he Brandon's uh, or excuse me, um, uh, Derek said that he wanted to see the Christian community, you know, or the the bodybuilding world more into the Christian community or something to that effect, and. I don't know how you integrate the two because one, one is about dying to yourself. I mean, literally it, it's, I mean, one is about taking up your cross daily and following Jesus. The other is about what I call a Nebuchadnezzar spirit. Nebuchadnezzar walked out on the portico in Babylon and said, is not this the great Babylon that I have built by my might and for my glory. Yeah. Bodybuilding, especially competitive bodybuilding, is the same thing. It is look at this great body I have built by my might and for my glory. I don't, I, I can't parse the two. I came out of it. I was obsessed with it. And the only time I was out of it was after I got saved and I and I dropped out for over, you know, for 20 years. And then when Madison, my daughter, died, I rebelled against God, became angry, and went back into it. But I have to say, Pastor Brandon, the entire time, the Holy Spirit was working on me, and I was being disciplined for my running from God. And, I mean, even to the point of a car accident that left me you know, partially paralyzed on my left side. But my, my point is this. When I would lay down at night, I was miserable because the Holy Spirit was was on me i mean you know you can't you know your life it, things are not the same and so where's the holy spirit in this thing um and the other thing is it, is this derek's purpose in life it, he he believes this is god's purpose for him i've heard him say it numerous times pastor brandon Biblically, not what you guys think or what I think. That doesn't matter. Okay. All y'all gonna bust me hard. You're, you're fighting with God's word here. Tell us what God's word said. Is this God's will for this guy? Is this God's purpose for him? Was he made for this? Because Pastor Brandon, he's successful. He reached the pinnacle. Well, the way the way to judge that 
in, in all of our lives, whether you know I'm a butcher, baker, candlestick maker, is whether or not the, my employment or my vocation or my hobby or whatever lines up with the agenda of God. Now, how do I know the agenda? The agenda is spelled out in the Great Commission. It, it does my does does what I'm doing allow me to do the Great Commission? Does it allow me to edify the saints? Does it allow me to disciple? Does it allow me to lead people to the Lord? Those kinds of things have to be put on as a rubric over anything we do. Now, if we're doing something that will cause people to stumble in the world of them not accepting Christ, then we know what we're doing is something wrong. So if I'm, for instance, a pimp, um, that's going to cause people to stumble. They're like, oh, how can you be a Christian if you're a pimp? Um, Obviously, that doesn't make sense. It's not consistent with the call of God. So if I'm starting to do something and 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 whatever that that job is, let's say I'm a stockbroker, okay? Nothing wrong with being a stockbroker, but if it's a problem though if I'm an insider trader. Okay? Yeah. So I'm cheating. So if I'm cheating to and making a lot of money, obviously God's not is going to frown on that. He's fine with me being a stockbroker, but if I'm starting to cheat and get insider deals, that's a problem. And it could be that for any any occupation. Okay, so say I, I'm uh, God's called me to be a bodybuilder. Fine. But he's not going to call you to do drugs. I can guarantee yeah. you that. Yeah. So if he's calling you to be a bodybuilder, fitness world, whatever, then do it naturally and do it as, as, as safe as you possibly can. The minute you cross the line into doing drugs, you, you cannot expect God's hand to be on you and bless that. You can think he is, and you can think you're called, but he's not going to call you to something... That's number one, going to damage your witness to the outside world, damage the gospel, uh, uh, which is a major problem, and and then damage your own body. It's not going to happen. So when he says, I'm called to do this, you can think you're called to do anything. But if it's violating the will of God, then you're not in the will of God. You're not doing that's not so you're you're not thinking straight. Look, man, I was there. I was there, guys. I I, I was a baseball athlete. I was in college. I was a pitcher. I thought God had called me to be a pitcher and to play professional baseball. Okay. And I was wrong. I was dead wrong because you know why? Baseball was an idol. It gave me my identity. It gave me my performance. And God says, that's not you. I had, but I thought it was. And I, I fought with God thinking, well, this is what I've done since I was five years old. Why would you take something away from me? Why would you tell me this is not me? Yeah. And, and and so in, in my mind, I thought this is God and I'll give God glory. I was like that. Yeah. And, and what it was doing, I was not giving him glory. I was taking and stealing glory for myself because at the, at the true motivation was not to glorify God. It was to glorify me and make a name for myself, make money. It was all about name and money. That's what it comes down to. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I've been there, done that. I, yeah. And he took it away from me. Yeah. So when Derek actually stands on stage or any other bodybuilder, and and I'm not going to run into the other sports right now because I'm dealing with this one. Um, But when any bodybuilder stands on stage, you cannot compete in bodybuilding, even on a state level, without steroids. Yeah, you just can't do it. Yep. Your body is not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God's. They're not mine. So if that is the case and I am damaging my body, and listen, I know what I'm talking about. I lived it. Now, for everybody that wants to sit out there and go, oh, you're being a hypocrite, I'm not being a hypocrite. I've lived it. I'm trying to warn you, stay out of it. You know, and I've I've already heard all the arguments. I've already I, I hear it all the time. You're being a hypocrite. You're this. You're that. No. Again, when a drug addict gets out of the drugs and he tells everybody stay away, everybody goes, "Oh man, that's beautiful. That's beautiful." Right? When an alcoholic does, "Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful." We are, we should all listen to him. Hey, kids, don't do that stuff. But when somebody like me stands out there, and you look great on the outside, and your insides are ninety years old you know, then everybody gets mad and wants to call you all kinds of names and everything. But what we're saying is biblically, this doesn't line up. And my problem with all this is pastor Brandon, I got kids coming to me going, 
Well, you know, Der- Derek won the Mr. Olympia. He he talks about Jesus, man. He yeah. gave glory to the Lord. I mean, and I even got guys that are in their 50s and 60s going, oh, bravo, bravo. Jesus is glorified. And I'm like, does nobody have any spiritual discernment? Yeah. I mean, maybe it's because I I was in it. I was, I mean, you know, and, and here's the thing. You, in that sport, you're constantly going around hunting for steroids, trying not to get caught, hoping you don't get caught. Most of the time, the DEA doesn't mess with you because you're not starting a website selling steroids all over the place. But you are still getting them shipped in through somebody, causing somebody else to sin, right? You're still doing that. You're still having somebody make it illegally. You're still obtaining it illegally. And I don't care what anybody says, you are still damaging your body. You know, well, you know what? We can mitigate a lot of those side effects by taking this drug to mitigate the problems with that drug. Well, the problem is, is you're constantly mitigating drug problems by going one to the other to the other because you're just in this cycle, never ending cycle of taking drugs. How can that be of God? Well, you're right. And and quite frankly, uh, look, what is the general population when they look at somebody that's in the bodybuilding world? What does the general population say? That guy's on steroids. That's the first thing they say. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, And so it's a stumbling block to anyone, especially if they're claiming the name of Christ, which is not consistent with uh, the way they're living. Well, forget it, man. No one's going to listen to them. Uh, They lose all credibility. And look, man, in the baseball world, it's the same thing. The guys in the major leagues are all on something. I'm sorry. It is what it is. In the NFL, they're all on something. So in the baseball world, let me explain. You can't play 162 games without being on something. They're on right. uh, uppers. They're on uh, mm-hmm. all kinds of things that can help them recover very quickly. So yeah. they're they're doing steroids, all that. It's just masked and covered, and they know how to do it well. Sure. But I was talking to a pitcher, you know, playing for uh, that came to spring training with us one time, and 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 of course we were in college, and he was playing for the San Diego Padres, and he said, "Look, man, we're all on something. Everyone has to be on something." And so right there, I knew at that point as a Christian playing college baseball, oh, my goodness, to go to the next level, you are going to have to violate your Christian principles and take drugs to some extent to be able to play at that level. I never got there, so I never was faced to, with that decision. But I knew, oh, my goodness, I, how how am I going to do this as a Christian? Um, and, and and so there it was, the dilemma Um and the river that I would eventually have to cross, it, it, whether or not I'm going to do something like that. Well, I knew back then I'm not going to do it. I'm, I, I said to myself, I'll try to do it naturally. Well, anyway, I got hurt at Tommy John. But what's my point? My point is, if I have to violate scripture in order to achieve something, that's when I'm, I'm, I have a problem. And 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 you can't get away from that with, with Major League Baseball, NFL football, or bodybuilding. You just can't get away without that. Yeah. So the the old saying, it's never right to do wrong to do right would hold true here. Well, yeah, because my what was my mindset? My side, my side. Well, if I if I become this baseball player, then I can spread the name of Christ all over because I'll be rich and famous. That's bogus. Does it? God doesn't want that. That's a nonsense. Yeah. That's that's crazy talk. And and God had to show me that no, I don't I don't need you. Uh, violating me, my principles to share the gospel. I'm sorry, and so he humbled me. Um, but yeah. but the, the again, we're going back to the ends do not justify the means, and the, the the people's motivation might be right. Well, I want to proclaim the name of Christ. Fine, it doesn't matter what your motivation is. It's a matter of what your behavior is. Is your behavior lined up with Scripture? If it's not, I'm sorry, it's DQ'd at that point. It's disqualified. Yeah. And that's why Paul says, I, I want I want to run the race. And he says, I want to compete according to the rules. Well, what did he mean by that? Well, he says, look, if I if I break the rules of God, I will be disqualified as far as receiving a reward for my walk with the Lord. And and, and that's what ends up pe- hap- people doing. They they become disqualified in their walk with the Lord. So when they get before the Lord, yeah, they're in heaven. But they're not going to receive any rewards because they broke the rules. Yeah, that's how it works. And so Paul yeah. even uses athletic uh, rule keeping 
as an analogy for us. So really, it still comes down to lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Don't work your butt off for a trophy on earth. I mean, yeah. I mean, let's break it down to bodybuilding, right? I mean, just because, you know, I I have a I have a national win trophy over here that you know, it's down in my basement. It's already broke. <laughs> I broke it. And, you know, and because it doesn't, you know, honestly, it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I mean, you know, it, it's just down here with all the other stuff that we had from it. And, you know, and I was, and, and it just hit me as you were talking. When you stand before Jesus, man, and, and, and you're going to, you know, if you're a Christian, you're going to stand before Jesus. And and you worked your butt off for a Mr. Olympia trophy, that that's gonna burn up. That I mean, that's gonna burn up. You you got that, like you said, you got that um illegally. You didn't you didn't play by the rules, so to speak. You you didn't follow the word of God. And so therefore, you you work for a trophy and fame down here. And and I've been there, I've been there, okay. And now I'm like, dude, I, I don't, I don't want that stuff, man. You know, I, I want, I want eternal rewards, man. I, I, I want to please the Lord. And my concern is if we could talk to Derek directly and, and I'm sure he's going to hear about this. And Derek, when you watch this, I want you to know that pastor Brandon and I both, um, we both think you're, you're probably a just, an awesome guy. I, I love the fact I'm so happy for you and your wife going to have a baby. And I just, man, God bless you guys. I, I just, you know, I, I pray that, uh, you know, that, that God lets everything in, in the pregnancy go well and, and your baby is, is healthy and everything. What would we say to Derek now? Because Derek's at that point now where, you know, how do you turn back, man? I mean, you're now Mr. Olympia. You're going to go, you know, and let's be honest, as a bodybuilder, there's there's very few like Derek out there, uh, you know, and he's a phenomenal God's gift in him genetically, all of that stuff. But that doesn't make you, just because you're genetic, you're gifted genetically, it doesn't mean that's God's will for your life. Right. Where does Derek go now? What would we say to Derek? I mean... Hey man, you know, because now he's going to go to church, you know, I'm sure they do go to a church and everybody's going to congrats. What an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. But the elephant in the room is I I'm going to say it. Okay. I, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong. Jesus is nowhere near you winning that Mr. Olympia. I mean, Jesus wasn't there making it to where you won that Olympia. I mean, he can't violate his own word. Am I am I right? Or is that right? Or, or, or are we off here? Well, yeah, I mean, you're you're right. You, if you achieve something in violation of scripture, I'm sorry, God's not in it. And and again, it's not I'm not to attack the person and his motivation no. and, and, and sincerity, but theologically you're disconnected from from reality a little bit and yeah. and when you think that man-made achievements and, by cheating or or violating scripture is sanctioned by god uh, i don't know what what your vision of god is but it's not theological that's for sure yeah. and and so that that needs to be corrected in in the person's own life of like hey look here here's here's the word of god um I need to submit this word of God to myself, to the word of God and, and, and follow what it tells me to do. If not, I'm not going to get blessed by God. You may think you're getting blessed, but you're not. And that was the problem with Laodicea is the Laodicean thinks he's blessed of God. But Jesus says to the Laodicean church, you're blind, you're naked, you're wretched. You don't even know the, your own condition. You think you're blessed because you have this this fame you have the uh, you have this uh you know money and stuff that's associated with this and you think this is the blessing of god you're totally wrong and that's laodicea so when you read chapter 3 of revelation that's what he's explaining to laodicea many christians 
think they're blessed of God and they actually, if they were to stand in front of Christ, he would he would he would say, you have an inaccurate uh, vision of yourself. According to me, you are desperate. You are blind. You have nothing because you're doing the wrong things. And, and so it goes back to what agenda am I on? And the first thing I would say is, well, where do you go from here? The first thing is if someone came to me and says, what do I do, Brandon? I'm, I'm lost. I don't, I don't, where's my direction? The first thing is number one, are you saved? Number two, if you are saved and God has given you spiritual gifts and you have to discover what those spiritual gifts are and those spiritual gifts will then tell you where God wants you. And you have to understand where the gifts are. So he gives all believers different gifts. The gifts are what he tells you to do as far as your agenda is concerned. Yeah. Look, he gave me a left arm, okay? And he gave me the ability to throw really hard. But I've spent the majority of my life since I was 21 in ministry. So playing baseball was not his agenda. Even though he gave me a left arm and the genetics to be a good ball player, um, that that was not his will for me. And, yeah. and, and at the end of the day, it's more of a spiritual thing rather than a physical thing. So can we, in love, Christian love for a brother, say that, well, l let me just say this. In order for you to repeat as Mr. Olympia, you know the drug use has to go up. Anybody that knows this sport knows the older you get, the drugs are going to go up. Um, it's still going to be illegal. You're still going to have these issues. Um, you're still going to have to, you know, make sure, you know, because, you know, you're going to get to your doctor, have to get your blood work done. Make sure that the, in, because you're pushing growth hormone, you're pushing insulin, you're pushing drugs that were not meant for what you're using them for they were meant for something else some were meant for women with breast cancer some were meant for animals uh trenbolone acetate hardest drug out there i'm sure he's taking it was meant for cows um and you know eq meant for meant for veterinarian uh things race horses if i remember right winstrol all of these things most of these drugs were veterinarian drugs or meant for other things and because we, or as bodybuilders and as a coach of bodybuilders for so long, I had a street knowledge of how to make these drugs do certain things to the body and make it look a certain way. But I'm not God and I'm not a doctor. I didn't know what was going on on the inside. But here's the thing. Your drug use is going to have to go up. Where does this stop? You you know, and and so in Christian love and as a brother, man, you know, and as a 57 year old man, I'm telling you at the end of your thing here, at some point you got to face the reality and get into God's word and go, okay, God, what do you say about this? And, and pastor Brandon, tell me at that point, once let, let's say, let's say Derek listens to this or any other Christian guy that's loaded on steroids, wanting to compete, all that stuff. Any other Christian guy hears this, now he's faced with, with truth. Yeah. What What does he do? Well, the first thing what the Bible would call you to do is to repent, and repent means basically to do a U-turn on the road of life, and and uh, you have to stop and change your direction because the direction you're going is going to end up in death. The wages of sin is death, and you can't avoid that principle in life. And yeah. you will reap what you sow. Okay. That's 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 what will happen if you don't stop. So the Bible offers an option of coming back, and it's called repentance. And you have to stop doing those types of things that are are in violation of scripture and get back on the straight and narrow. And and that's what we would ask someone to do. Is that an overnight thing? And sometimes it is, but most of the time it's a very slow, methodical turn. Because it's like turning an a, a airplane. You can't, sometimes you can't pull too many G's or you upset the, the people in the cabin. So sometimes the path that people are on has to be slow, especially if, it, if it's an addiction to drugs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cutting off drugs, cold turkey can sometimes put the person in some type of shock and hurt oh, them. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, so it just depends on what we're talking about, okay? You know, and 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 so sometimes the habit has to be broken over time. The person has to seek therapy. So whatever the issue is, the the principle is repent. So start down the path of turning my life around and get on God's path. And through Christ and, now. Through right? Christ. I mean, because look, let's be honest. You know, I've stood on stage, I've stood in front of thousands of people or you know, in, in New York and when I won my pro card and, you know, and, um, you know, what thousand people there, you know, everybody screaming and hollering for you, all of that stuff. There's an addiction there as well. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a serious glorification of the flesh, man. And every day you have to nurture your flesh. You have to look in the mirror. You have to flex. You have to do, you know, everything's about your flesh. You have to make sure you're feeding your flesh, you know, and, and I'm not, I mean, everything, you know, and then of course, you know, um, so when we repent and we say, okay, God, I, I see this is not the way to go, um, by your word and your Holy spirit, God, I, you, I need you to help me to, to get away from this. Does that mean Derek, you don't go to the next Mr. Olympia, you turn it and, or do we just keep going and going and going and, you know, well, you know what, um, when I win seven, eight, nine or 10 of them, then I'll get out and, you know, you know, because it takes time sometimes to turn the ship, you know, it does, it does. But I will say this, when you start turning it and if you turn it correctly, um, according to God's timetable, not your own. Um, you are going to lose in this world. You're going to lose every worldly advantage when you do it God's way. Uh, and that's why so many people won't repent is they don't want to lose the worldly advantage, the worldly yeah. advantage of making money or whatever. Look, most Christians for the last 2000 years have been poor. Why is that? Because when they, they claim to be a Christian, especially at their jobs, it caps them in a ceiling economically. Right. There's got there's people in that are, are in companies right now that they, they won't go woke and they won't go on the woke agenda. Well, the company caps them at a certain level. So you're going to make less money. You're going to lose worldly advantages. And that's what happens when you repent. When you do things God's way, look, you have to let those things go. That's how the devil traps us is he mm -hmm. gives you worldly advantage. If you play the game with the devil, he will do a deal with you. And he will give you what you want, but you will pay a price higher than what you thought. Anyone that does that. Yeah. And, and that's that's how the devil, the devil bargains. You end up paying more than what you bargained for. Yeah. And so you have to let go of that. And if you're willing to let go of that, then you're willing to let go of worldly advantage. You probably will not be competing for Mr. Olympia next time. Yeah. It, it just won't happen. Because you're, you're yeah. going to be trying to get off the drugs. You're going to be trying to get off the steroids. And you're just not going to be able to compete with a guy that's doing the steroids, right? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, you lose as far as the world is concerned. But you don't lose as far as God's concerned. At yeah. that point, when you get on the straight and narrow and you do the repentance, all of a sudden you start storing treasure in heaven. You start becoming uh, truly blessed, truly free. That You start living the abundant life. And, and that's why you can let the world go because God is allowing you to store up treasure in heaven and not on this earth. So you have to trade one for the other and you have to do the swap and the swap is by faith. That's why it's so difficult because you won't see yeah. it like treasure in heaven. What are you talking about? I don't see it. Yeah, I know you don't see it. You just got to believe it's there if you do the right thing. Yeah. And that's what makes it hard for people because look, I can compete. So, so to speak, if I compete over this or Mr. Olympia, if I'm that guy, then what am I going to get out of it? I'm going to get fame and I'm going to get money. It's very tangible in front of my face. That's hard to let go. I get it. Yeah. But if you don't, it will destroy you. And people are like, what do you mean destroy my life? Yeah, it will destroy your life in some way. Because here's the thing. What did Jesus say about broad is the road of destruction? And yeah. many find it. <clears throat> when you're on the broad road, Jesus says you will end up destroying yourself. You'll destroy relationships. You'll destroy your physical body too, but you'll destroy your spiritual life. And what did he say? What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul in the process? What are you yeah. crazy? 
Why would you give up your soul for material possession and material fame? And so everything has to be start putting in that spiritual perspective. And, and so what Messiah says is you must take up your cross and deny yourself and be willing to lose your life in this life in order to so, gain. Yeah. So bodybuilding is not about in any way denying yourself. It's not. It's it's the opposite. It's it is a complete feeding of yourself in every way, shape, and form. So, um, so uh, in, in wrapping this up, if you could talk to talk to Derek, just and let's say he is a brother in Christ. Yeah. And sure, I'm not you know, challenging that. Yeah. So let's let's we're going to assume he is and and him and his his I'm sure his wife is wonderful. And and when I say this, dude, I, I mean this sincerely. I, I really do. Um, as a, as an older brother, you know, he's a young man. And but as an older brother type man from a guy that that's been in that bondage for for most of my life, man, um, it doesn't end well. It just no. doesn't end well. So, Pastor Brandon, if you could sit down with him and he was going to listen to you, give him the word of God, and he you knew he was, was going to do what you s said because God was speaking to his heart. And, and my brother, if you're a Christian man, the Holy Spirit lives within you. Listen. Listen to what the word of God says, right? Now, we're, we're, I'm not against you. I'm for you. If you could talk to him for what, five minutes, what would give him counsel as a young man? What, to, what would you, what would, I'm Derek, what would you say to me? What would you say, man? I mean, yeah. Wh where I, does I, he go? I would say, Derek, you're cutting yourself short. You're meant for so much more. And you're accepting less than than what the devil is what, what 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 the devil is offering you because God wants the best for you, but the devil will make you accept second best or what's good, but he won't give you the best, and he's holding back the best for you, and you're settling, and God wants to use your life in a greater way, but he cannot use it unless you submit to his word, and if you do submit to his word and get on the right path you will be used in a far greater sense than you could ever imagine. But he will not use people who will not submit to his word. So the it's incumbent upon all of us to submit to his word and his authority and what he says, because he created us. He's the one who built us. He's the one who gave, gave, us, uh, gave us the gifts. And he knows how we're designed. And, and you would submit to that. You would actually find your true calling. And I, I have I have a pretty good hunch your true calling is not bodybuilding. It's doing the agenda of God, whatever that agenda is for your personal life. Yeah. Look, playing baseball for me wasn't the wasn't God's agenda. It was to go into ministry. I'm not saying you have to go in ministry. I'm just saying there's something else bigger than what you have. And I'll end on with this story from Troy, A Troy Aikman. He was the Dal obviously Dallas Cowboys quarterback. He got MVP, won the Super Bowl. And uh, after the Super Bowl parties had, went had, had been over and he went back to his hotel room, he sat in his hotel room by himself and started to cry. And he cried all night long. And people would say, why was Troy Aikman crying? He just got the MVP. He won the Super Bowl. This is the pinnacle of his career. Because Troy Aikman said when he was there alone by himself, he had reached the pinnacle and it was empty. There was yeah. nothing there when he got to the top because yeah. you know why God wasn't there. Yeah. That's important to remember. Yeah. What pastor Brandon said to all of you bodybuilders out there is going to sound really odd because Derek has reached the pinnacle of, of the bodybuilding world twice as a 212 competitor now as an open competitor and you're sitting there going there is nothing greater and what we're saying is there's something far greater 
And I've told people before, they're like, yeah, but you made it. You got your pro card, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, that in six dollars buys me a cup of coffee at Starbucks. That's right. It means nothing. And guess what I found out? It's empty. It meant yeah. nothing. It was chasing the wind. And now I have a broken body. And thankfully, I repented. And this is part of my ministry now. Yeah. Pastor Brandon, thank you for coming in. And I, I know this is this is not going to be popular. You're gonna get, you're gonna have people that are not gonna like you. And I know That's I'm okay. gonna have people that like me. don't like <laughs> me. But you know what? It go it goes with the territory. And let's be honest, the word of God is not popular now. And truth is subjective. Every man does that, which is right in his own eyes now again. And and um uh, and we're probably going to have videos made that's, you know, people rebutting this video. And um, that's okay. Bring it on, brother. Any of you guys you want to argue the word of God as far as you feel like this is okay and you can show us from God's word, I say bring it, you know, yeah. because uh, there, there's no way we can justify this. So, Pastor Brandon, I wanted to say thank you again for coming on. I, I wasn't Anytime, planning to man. call you this quickly. Um, but man, I, I just, I just knew that we had to address this because I got kids saying Jesus was in this because he's talking about Jesus. Now it's okay because you know, it's, it must be okay for me to do it. And I got older Christians sitting there saying the same kind of stuff that man, the you know, God made it to where Derek won it. This was God's will. And I'm like, yeah. guys, God's nowhere near that. Right. He's you know, I mean, God cannot violate his word so you can have glory. And when, and we've already said it all. So, again, thank you again, Pastor Brandon. All right, man. This Anytime. Has been, yeah, this is impact. Thank you. All right, brother. All right. The impact. Down he goes. Libby.